Happy Monday. I'm Keith Kosinski. Let's get this show going. First up today, celebrations in Iraq, something you don't usually hear about in the news. But today, world leaders are congratulating Iraq's leaders after the Iraqi military defeated the terror group ISIS. Iraq's prime minister declared victory against ISIS during a speech to his nation over the weekend. It's a battle the country had been fighting for more than three years. And yesterday, a parade celebrating the victory was held in Baghdad, and an official holiday was declared in Iraq. At one point, ISIS controlled one-third of Iraq, including the major cities of Mosul and Tikrit. But over the past three and a half years, Iraqi ground forces backed by the U.S. have retaken all the land in Iraq, once held by ISIS. The United States military said it will still help out Iraq to make sure the country remains stable. Okay, around the world, people celebrated Human Rights Day over the weekend. It marks when the United Nations adopted a document called the Universal Declaration of Human Rights that protects people no matter their race, political opinion, national origin, or religion. Some Tibetan people use the day to call attention to their fight against China for some freedoms. The Dalai Lama is the spiritual leader of the Tibetan people, and after more than a year of trying to get an interview, Tom Hansen recently sat down with one of the world's most influential people about the struggle for human rights for Tibet. And I was lucky enough to be on that shoot as well, so take a look. A spiritual celebrity. The really fantastic thing about kindness is that it's free. A political icon, a Nobel Peace Prize winner. With millions of followers, the Dalai Lama is one of the most famous figures in the world. He is our god, I would say. He is the living Buddha. Of course, of course, yes, yes. Finally made it. And recently, we got a rare chance to interview the man himself in Dharamsala, India. Just over our shoulder this way, these are the Himalaya mountains, and if you cross over those mountains, then you'll hit Tibet, which is where the Dalai Lama's from. From the moment we arrived, it was clear we had entered a sacred place. This is really powerful. People from all over the world visit the Dalai Lama's compound to be blessed. Your Holiness, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. To believers, the Dalai Lama is the living spirit of their god, Buddha, and the leader of Tibetan Buddhism. He was named the 14th Dalai Lama when he was just five, based on the centuries-old Buddhist belief that the Lama spirit enters the body of a child after the previous Dalai Lama dies, also known as reincarnation. Traditional way, try to find one young child. Fortunately, my case, quite successful. <laughs> Otherwise, this is some Dalai Lama, previous Dalai Lama, not very not successful. successful. <laughs> but he hasn't seen his home of Tibet in more than 50 years. That's because China has complete control over the land, and the government sees the world's most peaceful monk as a threat. China labels you as some sort of villain. Some Chinese, you see, even described me as a demon. A demon? How do you react when you hear that you're an evil demon? It's funny, funny. <laughs> then I respond, yes, I'm demon, with horn. <laughs> Like They're Dal Dalai Lamas. Oh, yes, like, <laughs> like that. According to Tibetans, Tibet takes up nearly a quarter of the entire country of China. It's a strategic region to the Chinese military and important because of its natural resources, including the world's third largest glacier, which provides water to over a billion people in the region. It's a vast area of land, a couple of times the size of Texas, that's been fought over for centuries. It's important to stability and security in the whole of the South Asia, East Asia region. The Chinese government took over the land in 1950, claiming they would help Tibetans out of poverty and bring necessary social change. With training from the CIA, the Tibetans rebelled against the Chinese, but they failed. By 1959, thousands of Tibetans, including the Dalai Lama, had fled to India as refugees, where they set up a government with the Dalai Lama as their leader. A few hundred thousand Tibetans, including many monks, scholars, killed. And meanwhile, uh, brainwash through education. Our human brain have the ability to develop common sense. It's some of these hardliners, the Chinese, that part of brain missing. 
This criticism angers the Chinese government, which continues to have a tight grip on Tibet and has basically tried to erase its entire dark history. To this day, Tibetans can't practice their religion or speak out against the government, and most aren't allowed to leave. Little information gets in or out, and for journalists, it's almost impossible to visit. There is camera, there are eyes watching on you 24-7. Yes. You can't do whatever you want. Everything will be tracked down by Chinese government. Even little things like having a photo of the Dalai Lama are illegal in Tibet. I think out of there, a certain sort of narrow-minded political thinking. It's political spin. And, and out of fear. They're scared of you. Huh? Unable to return to his home, the Dalai Lama travels the world, speaking about global issues. Time come. We need to uh, think about global well-being. But when it comes to his future and the future of Tibet, the Dalai Lama says he's not looking for a revolution in China, just freedom for his people. It's a movement that's grown far beyond Tibet. Politically, we are not seeking independence. We are not seeking separation. It remain within the people's world of China. It's our own interest, provided they must respect our culture, our language, and our ancient knowledge. Will there be another true Dalai Lama? That, uh, I don't know whether the very institution of Dalai Lama should continue or not up to Tibetan people. But they will decide. As our time with the Dalai Lama wrapped up, I had one lighter question to ask. You have more than 13 million followers on Twitter. You have more than 800,000 followers on Instagram. But do you have something called Snapchat? Yes, it's how a lot of young people communicate now, and it's through video. It's, it's pretty cool. I think you'll like it. And there I was, phone in hand, teaching one of the most influential people in the world how to Snapchat. Tom Hansen, Channel One News. I'm very happy this old person have the opportunity to share millions of young, bright sort of uh, people. Thank you. That was great. Such a cool dude, and now he knows how to snap thanks to Tom. So, so. <laughs> and if you want to see more from our journey, including when the Dalai Lama slapped me twice, head over to channel1.com. <laughs> and of course, we can't forget the word in the news, Buddhism. It's the world's fourth largest religion, originated in India, and later spread to China, Japan, and Tibet, and now has nearly 500 million followers. All right, when we come back, we're cruising into this week's next big thing.